Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, Bobby D here with Inspire Hearts and Virtual Event Fundraising, and I'm so excited. I have my friend, Daniel Snelson, right here, mm -hmm. over there. She's over there. There she is. All right, uh, with me today. And I met Danielle, I don't know, I think it's almost almost a year now. She put up this Facebook group, the Nonprofit Event Fundraising Facebook group. And I was like, okay, I'm an event fundraiser. I have to know her. And then since I've met her, she has done some amazing big things. So Danielle, thanks for being a part of, uh, a part of our, our, our talk today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. So now, not only have you created the group, but you also are the founder of the profitable nonprofit event.com and also danielsnelson.com. You, you consider yourself the uh, event fundraiser educator, which I mean, is why we're making these videos because we're educating nonprofits. So I am super pumped to have you here today. Thank you. So All excited. Right. I love talking about fundraising events. Totally. We My can favorite. just forever, like days and days and days. So I'm sure we can geek out on it for a very long time. <laughs> totally. So let's geek out a little bit. So now here we are in the new normal. You just, I mean, like right as this was like happening and events were getting canceled and postponed and whatnot, you had this big idea to do a live event webinar, like actually produce a live event webinar. Let's, let's talk about what that was like, what that felt like and kind of the response that's been from that. Yeah, no, it was really great because um, as everything was kind of shifting, um, I really wanted to get my hands on a virtual component. Like I wanted to try it myself, you know? Um, now for me, it was kind of like, okay, like we do this at live events. Like how is this different than doing it virtually? And so our AV team set up um, a full on studio in their warehouse and it was all social distancing. There was lots of hand sanitizer and everything. And so we were following the rules. Um, but it was just a really fun experience to get on stage and to really just talk about how to have a virtual event. And it was just really important to me to not just talk about it, but to show people because especially my clients are so, they, they need to see things to like really get their hands on it. Right? right. And so, and, and for me to like really learn how all the components work together and what it looks like for um, an attendee. And I just didn't want to test that on a fresh event and never had had gone through it before. And so sure. anyway, it was just a really fun experience to um, walk through that process and um, for people like you to be able to watch at home and be like, oh, this is fun. I get yeah, it. <laughs> it was. And I was definitely from that, that participant lens. You know, if I was a donor, you know, I had my, my cell phone out and I was making donations, you know, I needed to see my name come up on the board. You know, there were the bids that were going on in the auctions, you know, and, and whatnot. Um, but then what was that kind of that user experience? And it was great. It was, it was almost seamless. I mean, the way that we went through, you know, Facebook live and all the comments that were happening and the conversations, and then to see from the backside, you know, you kind of did a little bit behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So then now as kind of a connector and, you know, kind of guider of all things within virtual event fundraising uh, to see how all of those, you know, components really came together. So I, I, I loved it. And you did set some best practices in place, you know, that day. So bravo on all of that. <laughs> yeah, it was very fun. Awesome. So now I know that you work with so many nonprofits out there in the world and, and many have had to cancel and postpone their events or they're looking future events. Um, like what are their biggest questions that they're asking you? Like what, what, you know, how are you helping them the best? The biggest questions I've been having is at what point do I need to know if I'm having a virtual event? So I think that when COVID kind of came through, everybody was like, but my events next week. And so th those, those nonprofits were having to just really make that choice like right now and to decide if what they were going to do. Now we're kind of in a different scenario where people have had some time to then be like, oh, well, my event's a month from now, my event's this summer, my event's in the fall. Right. So now we actually have time to like start planning and make decisions about what we want to do. And I just really think that in all honesty, like my very, very personal opinion is just that there's no reason to cancel. And so whether you postpone or you go virtual, I really think that, that right now, like those are the things that we should be considering is what does a virtual event look like? Who do you need to contact? How do you get your hands on a virtual event and, yeah. and make it work for you? Especially if you already have something planned um, and you've been an existing nonprofit having events, that means you have a, a following. Yeah, yeah, and there was a group that I was you talking to. Have supporters, you have people. <laughs> Oh, sorry. We had a little glitch. Obviously, that's the virtual event world that that happens, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
So you're, you're right that like I was looking with a, a group yesterday and, and it was like, well, how many people do you want to have at your live event? And they were like, well, I don't know, 400, 450 would be great. And then I look at their Facebook page and they have like 8,500 people that like their Facebook page. I'm like, whoa, you can't put 8,500 people into an event space, but virtually, I mean, 8,500 people could really just be the start of that and then really expand that net out into, mm-hmm. the, into a true global connection. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I've been discovering with the virtual event space is the opportunity to attract and reach more people and to have them participate in your event, your virtual event versus your live event. I mean, we're so restricted in a, in a live event with how many people and um, can be there. I mean, I, one of my largest clients, actually, we have to turn people away and we have 1,200 people come to the event because it's that popular. And so, and you know, we raise a lot of money and it's fun and it's a mm-hmm. must be at event. Well, now you open up virtually anyone can come. <laughs> sky's the limit. Yeah, sky's the limit. No, that's great. Um, so then I know for me, I get tons of questions about, okay, so we're thinking about doing a virtual event or yes, we are going to do a virtual event. Like what are our, our ticket buyers or what are our sponsors? You know, how do we approach them? How do we have that conversation? Yeah. Again, there's so much opportunity in the virtual space. I'm just loving it. Um, for sponsors, especially there's so much, um, co- capacity to increase our marketing impact with event sponsors. So I, I teach a course called the profitable nonprofit event and I teach nonprofits how to sell event sponsorship for their live event. And what I've really loved about this whole shift is that part of um, attracting sponsors to, to buy high value event sponsorship is to provide them something in return, which is marketing. And so you're focused a, a lot on like who your attendees are, how many followers you have, how many clicks you have, like how often are you promoting them? Like what is all your, what are all the marketing components around what you do as an organization and how can you put that into your event? Right. And so what I love about the virtual space is, you know, sometimes when we're talking about just events, like um, if I have 400 people attending my event, well, I can really only support a marketing plan around 400 people right. um, on some level at the event. And so my sponsors are looking at that for value, right? But now in a virtual setting, you go, oh, you have 8,500 people that I get to market to? So my value just like exponentially increased. So I just love it for sponsors because now we can start charging more. And in addition to that, the actual virtual event costs a whole lot less than a live event. So now you're like more revenue, less expenses. Yay. Bigger profit margin. That's what we want. (laughs) Big profit margin. Right on. So anyway, that's kind of the short story, but long story, but it's such such a great opportunity. Totally. And and I love how quick a click away a sponsor really is. And and that's a great way now to track that as well, too, from a nonprofit side. Look, here we're gonna put out this virtual event. Here's our list of sponsors, and here's their trackable links. It's like click. Look, we had, you know, five hundred people click through your link. And you know how many of those Mm on the sponsor side, you know, actually converted to sales. And then now they're able to look at that true investment and what is their ROI for these nonprofit events. And you're right. Then, then once that happens, then you can increase the value of this, you know, in addition with your broadcast, in addition to people that are truly participating in business with your sponsors that have that partnership with you. I I, I love that. That's fantastic. Very exciting. Yeah, Um, it's great. (laughs) Yeah, super good. Okay. So then let's say I'm nonprofit and I've had to postpone my event until, you know, October or, you know, November or whatnot. And it was going to happen here in May. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, okay, now what? What are some tips that you could give to those nonprofits that have had to push that event, you know, out or maybe even had to cancel it? What's, what's something that you could give them? Hmm. I, I'm really pro not canceling. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't cancel. Don't cancel. I know it feels scary to a lot of nonprofits to be asking for money right now. And I think for me, it's a good reminder that sometimes, you know, like, especially our supporters or people who attend our events, they're not always in the same position that we're in. So perhaps as an organization, we might be feeling that pressure like, oh, where is our money going to come from? How am I going to pay my staff and all these things? And so I translate that that everybody's feeling that way. And it's always good to remember that not everyone is feeling that way. And there's people, especially your, your supporters, your, your longstanding supporters, they want to help you. And so, so not, 
so not letting your emotions like take over what other people are experiencing and feeling. There's yeah. a lot of people out there right now that are thriving and they want to give back. And so give them the opportunity to give back. For sure. Yeah. Don't, don't take that opportunity away from them. Give them that opportunity to like, not only to, to give back, uh, but then also to become, you know, a, a, an ambassador for you. And that's what mm-hmm. I love about, you know, donor or ambassador donors that yes, they give, you know, their, their, their treasure to you or their time or their talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most importantly within is that tribe. They, you know, we want to get that engaged with that tribe, their network, and yeah. for them to spread the meshes out there. This is why I love this nonprofit. This is, you know, this, this is the great work that they're doing. I invest within this and I want you to think about that as well too. Or they can send it directly to their friends in an email, but like, look, I love this group. They're doing great work and I want you to be involved. And then now yeah. and that's, how. Yes. Yeah. And I have a client right now that um, they rely on volunteers to come and help them. Um, and uh, right now their volunteers aren't coming in. And yeah. so what is interesting is that they keep asking. They're like, well, then what can I do? How much do you need? Like, how can I support you financially? Um, and so all of these people still want to help. And so they're like, wow, like this is amazing. We've had more cash revenue come in, which stinks because they still need the help. They're having to figure out how to... Yep social distance the volunteers and like yep. still get the help they need. But, yep. um, people are really, they're like, I can't come and volunteer. And that's something that's important to me. So how else can I help you? Right. So we need to have that, that open for them. Yeah, for sure. And that, and that's what it is, especially within a virtual event. It is, you know, it is opening these opportunities for your volunteers, for your donors and your followers, but then really attracting those new people, you know, to you. And I was having a a conversation yesterday and talking, I mean, it was a very important uh, group that that helps, you know, that supports teens and, you know, kind of helps them, you know, with kind of some mental health things. And I was like, these teens are on social media. If you could raise some money, you could truly broadcast out to them a lot of sponsored posts. You could do Facebook targeted marketing, all of these things and let that help be out there. And people are like, oh yes, they're so excited for that. So it's, um, it's, it's a whole wide new world that we, uh, yeah, that we're, we're making it happen in. So it is, it is quite exciting. Awesome. So good. Okay. So we talk sponsorships, we talk next steps. Um, and I, I mean, like what, like, what is this nonprofit world going to look like in the next six months? I know what the last three weeks have looked like. And now <laughs> let's, let's kind of foreshadow and give, give some hope, you know, to our nonprofit friends that are out there. Yeah. Well, I can't speak for the virus. I have no idea what's going to happen with that. But what I really truly believe that um, because of this, it's just shed light on some, um, an opportunity that we haven't been taking advantage of and in the virtual space and virtual events. And I think that because of how cost effective having a virtual event is and the the reach that the potential reach that we have with our attendees i think it's going to become something that we consider as an option right. like for nonprofits that okay do we have a live event do we have a virtual event do we have both right. you know i don't think that it's going to take the place of a live event no way no. uh because we have we're, we're just social people we need to get together yep. um but why not incorporate this new idea and yeah. expand our reach expand the opportunity and so for me i think that that is where like the hope kind of lies in this so maybe the you know you're not in a situation where you have to decide if you're having a virtual event next week but i think that it's something that we really need to spend time figuring out, making a plan, going, what do we have? What don't we have? How do we incorporate a virtual event into our revenue stream? Um, And so that way we have our live event revenue and now we have our virtual event revenue. Um, So if our live event gets canceled for some reason, we still have some other kind of money coming in, right? It's creating a a plan B, you know, you've had the plan A, which was the event and now plan B, which is the virtual event. And I had this brainstorm last night. What if we evolve plan B into the plan V plan virtual. So now (laughs) let's do that. Let's make that in. And that becomes a part of that. Hey, now peanut gallery. (laughs) Awesome. Well, good. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for spending a few moments with me today and and sharing that amazing geeky nonprofit brain that you have uh, with our, with our friends. Um, But yeah, thanks for being a part of this. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, Danielle Snelson with profitable nonprofit event.com and Daniel Snelson.com. event fundraiser educator. Uh, Yes, I'm going to put all the links below. Please follow her there. And remember, nonprofits, what you're doing in the world matters and you are changing the world for the better. So continue to be awesome. Continue to do that. And uh, and happy fundraising, everybody. Again, Bobby D with Inspire Hearts and virtual event fundraising. All right, everyone, have a great day. Mm